with your hosts, Not Afraid, Mike Cab, Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back. Another week yeah. of two hotheads on cannabis getting hotter all the time. Yeah, hot, 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 hot. We really are. The hothead nation is, is getting bigger every time we check. And, and I just want to make a personal shout out to everybody who joined our Facebook page. I mean, every week it's getting bigger. We're getting more love. All the love that you guys have been sending about our guests. Uh, we appreciate it yeah. a lot. We're yeah. all blushing here. Yeah, we love what our show is becoming. <laughs> and it's because a lot of those people on that Facebook page and, and the listeners and the callers. Our hothead nation. And our guests, yeah. Exactly. We have some amazing guests on the show. We we have some big news to announce this week. We, yeah. have, we have an amazing guest coming in this week, of course. Oh, my God. This is, <laughs> this is uh, pretty great. Yeah. We, we got a guy who grew up in this area, Boston, Massachusetts. He's now in a huge, huge act called Slightly Stupid, and his name's C-Money, and we're very excited to have him in on the show. He, his last, uh, his band, if you're not familiar with him, look him up, Slightly Stupid. It's two O's in there somewhere, stupid. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, the last two tours they did uh, with Cypress Hill and Snoop Dogg. And they were the, you know, they co-headlined. They were actually the top headliner on those bills, and that shows you what kind of pull this act has so very excited yep and not only are they an excellent band but they're huge outspoken leaders in the in the movement which and is, he's the guy that's why we're having. he's the guy in the band that everyone knows for his support of our cause it's fantastic yeah we're very excited we'll hopefully be getting slightly stupider as the as the course <laughs> of the afternoon think, goes on i think that's a given <laughs> it's true we have a nice leisurely day today we got it we got to catch up there's been a lot of news uh, lately that we haven't had a chance to get to I was that we wanted to bring I, up. Yeah, I was thinking we can't even get, like, the last couple shows, it's been so action-packed that we couldn't even keep up on not just the marijuana legalization news that's out there, but even our own news. We couldn't even keep up on our individual stuff that's been upcoming, and it's uh, we're going to get to a lot of that today, aren't we? Yep. Today's the day. We're yeah. catching up. Oh, yeah, catching up. We what, are. Uh, can we talk? Well, I think I've, a lot of people already saw it on the Facebook page, but uh, we're very excited about next week's show too. So excited! <laughs> I can't even. I cannot contain myself. I've been. <laughs> I've been freaking out about this all week. So. Um, Same here. <laughs> for real. Cat. For real. For real. I don't know how. And and how did you do this, Mike? This is all you. This is all you. I want you to take credit where credit is due. Well, this is what we do. This is <laughs> this is what I do. I go out and find this stuff for us. So who'd you find? I found Representative Congressman Barney Frank. Oh, oh yeah. Like I'm yeah. so starstruck. I, I'm like the, the kind of dork that has like framed heart pictures of Barney Frank in my yeah. locker. <laughs> yeah, me Not too. really. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm even more excited. I have like three, a couple Facebook pages and I got my own private one. And uh, one of my friends, I'm going to shout him out right now, Mike Connor. He, uh, he, he uh, maybe I shouldn't even said his name. He might get in trouble, I guess. But, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he, he was actually excited about it too, and he said he might even call in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you got Barney Frank. People, people get excited. Yeah, I was talking to uh, my friend's parents were over last night, and my my dad. I talked to him about how Barney Frank was going to be on the show, and they all have all these ideas. Oh, you got to ask him this. You got. Can you ask him if yeah. last night actually at the um, at the uh, fundraiser, the normal fundraiser that I went to, and lots of us were there. Nikki and Tommy were there. Sarah Sparks, DJ Slim. It was an excellent night. Um, but I ran into Dick Evans there, who we had on the show last week, and uh, he was he was like, Hey, you know, you got to ask Barney Frank if he's going to run for governor. Oh, is that, like, well, that's a good question. And I'm like, all right, well, you Holy know. Holy shit, I never thought of, of that. Us, a lot of us, I mean, I grew I, up. I was thinking of asking him uh, if he was playing, like, like if I could hook up a deal, a, you know, produce a show with him and Ron Paul. Oh, that'd be Like incredible. competing, you know, like arguing, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like Crossfire. <laughs> They'd you know be the I mean? two hotheads on. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that would be. Uh, but I like they that. collaborate. Gov They're Governor, I didn't even think of that, and that is possible, isn't it? 
I mean, it could it could happen. I I, I suppose, but you know, I want to see how how serious he really is about leaving politics for good. I don't think yeah. it's possible for Bernie Frank to to he can leave the bullshit behind, but yeah. he, his uh, political vision is is I, always one hundred percent ahead of the curve. Can, like, can you imagine if he was governor in fa- in terms of our cause? Unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Seriously, because yes. like all of a sudden. It would be like, well, we could actually pass a law if we could get it through the leg. I mean, that. I just want to wow. say, I'm looking around the room. Every one of us has this happy grin on. Yeah. Us. <laughs> it's like, true. It's uh, true. <laughs> what, so we're taking phone calls today. Definitely six one seven six zero six four one two two. If you have questions that you want us to ask any of our guests, today's guest, C Money, or next week's guest, Congressman Barney Frank, let us know. Hit us up on Facebook. Call in 617-606-4122. We're also what? Are, what else are we doing for our listeners today? Oh, we have a big we have a big announcement that we uh, are, are going to be giving away two tickets to the Lift Festival, which is next weekend, uh, the 16th and 17th. A bunch of incredible bands are going to be there. Uh, the McLovins, who we had on our show last week, that were excellent. They killed it. Um, Dex, 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 motherfucker, of course, Dex is going to be hosting. Tur is going to be hosting. I saw his hosting skills on display last night at the. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm so psyched. bummed. Yeah, that uh, we 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 almost have to f- like try to tr- like teleport up there. We're doing our I show. I might be teleporting. I want to see. I might be Dex busting over this. there Friday night and coming back <laughs> just yeah. in time for Barney Frank. Will back mountain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just snowboard down the hill all the way here. <laughs> so if you want to, yeah, we're about you, to get lifted at Lift. But the question is, when you do that, what will you wear? Oh, <laughs> oh you know that I'm gonna Neon. look like straight out of hot, hot tub time machine. Yeah, you guys ever seen that? That's yes. what I'll be looking hot like. Hot tub time machine. Yep, that's <laughs> for real. Oh. All the day glow. Can handle. Yeah, what was that comment you made about how uh, you think that my neon day glow outfits were what helped get Barney Frank on the show? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, what unlike a lot of uh, uh, elected officials, Congressman Frank actually he gives He's the final style. say. He, fi- he, he well, he gives the f- and he and he gives the final say. Like a lot of times, like when we book Gary Johnson, Gary Johnson didn't say yes to the interview. His campaign manager said yes. Um, Barney Frank was the one who said yes. He checked out our stuff. That's incredible. He came back and said, "Yeah, I'll do them." I'll How do did that we show. trick him into doing into doing this? This is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I still can't really believe it. I've been freaking out about it. Like I said, all week. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what 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 else are we doing on? Oh, we will. We're gonna give away the tickets. Let's tell people how oh, they yeah. can win the tickets how about on Lift Fest. Um, yeah. So. See, since C Money is going to be on the show, and uh, it's slightly stupid, is a you know they uh, they have a lot of influences: punk, hip hop, reggae, ska, soul. Um, we would like you if you want to win these two tickets to the Lift Festival. Once again, that that's going to include, I believe, it's over twenty five bands. It's a, it includes a Lift ticket. So if you're a skier, snowboarder at Whaleback Mountain, you're going to have a great time. You know, a weekend ski pass plus all this new all this music and parties and it's going to be amazing you get to hang out with Dex motherfucking tur yep and and, uh, and on regular radio and on regular radio who's sponsoring the whole event we're really excited and um yeah so if you would like to win those tickets um you should call in once again our number is 617-606-4122 yeah. i always have to look behind me for that. I'm, I'm gonna memorize it one day and um and so, if you have the guts to freestyle a little bit with me and see money, yeah. that's how you're going to earn Let's hear that. those two Woo! tickets. I wish that means I have to have the guts to freestyle. So, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm ready for you guys to put yourself, you know, step up, step up to the plate. Um, we can maybe make it a little battle or something if we got multiple people calling in. But that, so wait until a little later in the show. See, Money's going to be joining us after and, the 420 and, break. And, and, and just in case, no one has the guts to do it. <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> no, I listen to the no, wimp. No, no. I know you're not going to, we'll, we'll give, it, give away the tickets to the best caller of the day. If, if nobody does the freestyle. But yes. Heather's going to make it happen. How can I'm you- saying, I mean, come on guys, why not? It's two free tickets to an incredible festival and it's worth it. Think about how much it would normally cost. Like a hundred, I don't even know. It's expensive. Can you <laughs> Going freestyle? Going snowboarding, just, yeah. yeah. Well, can we'll you see. freestyle with C Money? Fun. We want to see it. <laughs> and Heather, um, we, we got an instant feedback too. Uh, they're asking about uh, our show. If we're going to do, have we done the Peter McWilliams quote yet? Oh yeah, the P- yeah we're gonna do a Peter McWilliams. Yeah, we're gonna read today. some Peter McWilliams today. So definitely. don't worry, keep yes. listening. We're yeah. definitely gonna have. We um, haven't done it yet, and we will definitely. Peter McWilliams If you want to know what we're talking about, but we will be talking about. You should know. Peter if you don't know now, you know. Yeah. 
One of our best guests. Shout out to was, Biggie. Yeah. Ten years. Ten years ago. Uh, oh, Biggie Small? Yeah, it was oh. just a few days ago. It was ten years since his death. So I didn't <laughs> I just, realize that. Wow. I was reminded of that. If you don't know, now you know. They've they got to solve those murders. I'll tell you that. I just don't get it. But It's true. We should play some Biggie on the show today. Yeah. Maybe we'll, yeah. we'll work we'll. on that. We'll get some... Uh, some ready to die up in here or something like that. So we do we do have a big show. Oh, did we say we're going to talk about the PPQs? Oh yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about also regarding and PPQs and if you want to weigh in, I know people are talking about it online through some uh, email groups on the PPQs with Mask and we will be talking about that. And uh, why don't we play some music and and we'll come back and we'll get into some of these subjects and take some phone calls. Absolutely. What are you slightly stupid on right now, Newman? Yeah, a tracks called Everything You Need. All right. Remassmedia.com is a local news and entertainment media team. Remassmedia.com supports free speech media outlets like Unregular Radio, The THC Show, KOP Productions, and more. Check out Freemassmedia.com for exclusive videos, interviews, and blogs and connect with Boston's best indie media outlets. Freemassmedia.com is an official sponsor of the THC Show on unregularradio.com. Two hotheads on cannabis with Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. All right, and we're back. Unregularradio.com's Two Hotheads on Cannabis. And um, we are getting into the news, getting into the local news, and we got a lot of it to uh, chat about. Um, this week, of course, um, we were hyping it up a lot on our show last week uh, with Dick Evans, um, was the legalization hearing at the State House, and I unfortunately wasn't able to be there, but of course Mike was, and Nikki Smokes, and Tommy, were you, you were there as well? No, at least, tisk tisk. Anyway, um, I want to hear from you guys. What was it? What was it like? How did it go? I know Alex uh, was there too, and he told me a little bit about it. But um, I know there was a ton of support, like an incredible amount of people there. There, there was a, like, you know, there was several bills. There were a lot of people in the room, uh, especially early on. The college students, a lot of college students, mm -hmm. definitely, a lot of mass can people. Law enforcement against prohibition was there. Um, Dick Evans was there. Nikki and I spoke together on a, on a little panel. I thought that went really well. Um, that was a surprise. Like, I didn't expect them to call us up together, but that was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. That worked out. Yes, it did. Nikki's, Nikki's here. Nikki smokes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we brought you up. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Nikki, who, who else spoke? What did you think about the hair? Um, there was uh, Sean McSoley and Alex Arsenal. Um, Catherine did really well. She brought up the pharmacopoeia and how, you know, this was one celebrated plant. So I, everyone had something to add to the discussion, and it was pretty awesome. Um, Sean McSoley was definitely really moving. Yeah, tell me, uh, I know about his story, but um, for our It's funny, because, you know, I didn't realize, maybe he told me before and I didn't hear it, because sometimes I'm focused on something else, but... That was the first time I, I realized the story, what he said. It was just, wow. And he, and he saved it at the right moment. Like, he's been on the show several times and didn't bring that up. So tell us, yeah. What's, I mean, <laughs> Basically what happened to Sean is, is uh, you know, we're, 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 he's testifying at the state house with the state reps. On the front lawn is the Boston Common. His, his university is right there, right in the heart of uh, where, where the state house is. And uh, college students often gather on the Boston Common to smoke cannabis because they can't in their dorm rooms they get in trouble so they go out in the common they smoke a joint he and a friend were smoking a joint some there are also a large homeless population in that area a lot of uh, drug addicts real drug addicts not not weed heads not college kids and uh, uh, someone came up to him a couple of people I think apparently and they uh, asked for his cannabis they said we saw you with a bag of weed give it to us we want it for the economic value of it because that bag of cannabis is probably worth 50 to 100 bucks um, and he was stabbed uh, multiple times, severely injured, could have died. Yeah, he was left for dead. Yeah. It was like six or eight times. And why? He said if the, that was a pack of cigarettes or if that was a six-pack of beer, or you, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. It happened because 
that bag of marijuana is worth so much money on the street. Can I weigh in on this? Absolutely. Yeah. No, this uh, is my, uh, Simpson is here. Yeah. Weigh in. You know, that's my territory. The commons. Uh, the dudes that stabbed him, uh, they wasn't homeless bums, drug addicts. They belong to a gang that hangs out over here at McDonald's. and. That's Subway. true, too. You're right about that. Uh, there are a lot of gangs uh, in this area, yeah, too. The, right? Well, those are the ones that go up on Mary Jane Hill, okay. and they rob and they stab people. Good point. I'm glad you They take you're... their iPhones. They take their drugs. They have a lookout. He wheels up there, see who's doing what. Then they call in the rest of them. They come up. I watch them every day. They do this all day long. And what do the cops do about them? Do they even know? Uh, they yeah, the cops know about them. The cops have busted a few of them. But the thing is, they're a gang. They're a blood gang. They're pyrus. And uh, they've been doing this for the last couple of years. I had to run in with them a uh, year and a half ago about my artwork. You know, but I had to call the leader on the West Coast to get them uh, to back off. But college kids, they don't have that advantage. I did. Yeah. 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 Right. And would very you, would interesting you agree that, input, uh, yeah. Simpson. <laughs> very, very. That's right from the street. I would yeah. say. I mean, what? Wouldn't you agree though that that wouldn't have that wouldn't have happened over a pack of cigarettes? Oh no, it yeah. would happen over a pack of cigarettes. Oh but really? Then because they got a zero understanding. Okay. Yeah. So just a but, 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 but seriously, would, it, would a pack of cigarettes be worth it to them? Would five uh, bucks compared to 50 or 100? Yeah, because you know why? A pack of cigarettes about $8 to them, and they don't have it. They, you know, they are very treacherous over there. I mean, very. The police know they come on the bike trail in the morning, and they stand out there. Once they leave, the rangers don't get out there till after 11, and they spit. So they have a field there up Mary Jane Hill. I don't go right, up there for that there. reason. They're out there arresting pot smokers and not yeah. arresting the people who are robbing the pot yeah. smokers and yeah. leaving them for dead. Good job. Good use yeah. of uh, police resources. Do you think... Um, but, but you know, <laughs> that kid wouldn't have even been outside if pot was legal. Yeah, he, 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 he would have been in his dorm room and he would have been safe and protected. Yeah. And, uh, Playing that, some video yeah. games, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it still some, doesn't change the Eating uh, some situation. Dorito it's just, tacos. It's just certain parts in the park I won't venture off to. One by the, the tea station area by Boylston and Tremont and the other one is Mary Jane Hill and the other one is at the beginning of the park. At night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, daytime, daytime too. Daytime too? It's food paradise and down by uh, Park Street, too many all right. cops. All right, all right. You know? Well, stay, right. stay away then. <laughs> we, smoke no weed this down This is a public there. service <laughs> announcement. <laughs> stay away. So, Let's get back to the uh, legalization. Yeah, I was going to ask, I mean, what, what do you think that... Uh, you know the legislate legislators. What was their response? What did they have to say? And and I also heard there was some opposition. So I want to. It was very interesting. Uh, well, it always is. You know, you could see uh, almost the split among them. Uh, it just seemed like, you know, O'Flaherty, he kind of gets it, but he's never going to support it. I just see it in him, and I like him. Like um, you could just kind of feel it. Like yeah, which I ones are interested. Know. Um, there was another rep. I don't even know if his name. I, I think he was sitting in front of the Murphy play card, but I don't think that was his name. Um, he asked me us a question. On the left, the gentleman on yeah, the left. Yeah, the gentleman on the left. He asked us a question. Um, there was two questions uh, that were asked a lot, and one of the questions was, uh, how would federal law, how would it affect, you know, they wanted to know if they changed it within the state and the federally it's still legal, should, you know, is that a problem? And the answer is no, it's not a problem. Dick Evans talked about it last week on our show. This is how we lifted prohibition. We did it state by state. And the other question was kind of directed towards uh, the other comment. I think there were actually maybe some other questions I missed, but one was directed right to Nikki in her testimony, what she brought. It was the hemp. Yeah. What was the question? And, and, and tell us about that. Well, I brought up a bunch of uh, products from my house um, that all have hemp in them. And, you know, like hemp lotion, hemp. Um, dog lotion like chapstick for for Yuna's uh, paws and um, hemp protein and hemp oil and uh, some of the panel was surprised that I got it in a in a grocery store in Massachusetts they go wait a minute that's legal you you got that at a grocery store in Massachusetts they just stopped me like mid-sentence I was telling them about the oil and you know, they don't even know what, what's being sold in their grocery stores. It's amazing. And, and and the fact is, they didn't. You know, they still didn't understand. And and I uh, yeah. I, I made the point. I was like, in the end, they were looking at me, and I said, "Look, they can grow it in Canada. We can't grow it here. We can import it from Canada. Once it's in the U.S., we can trade it. We can sell it. We can put it out in the store. 
but there's still we're still not allowing those jobs for this this substance this this non drug su- it's not a drug it's it's a, it's a hemp product it's for food it's for other fiber there's a know. demand for it yeah, and a I, we for had it. a wide range of things like and, uh hemp clothing and when we looked at them right at the rep i said it does the law doesn't make any sense on that at all and he looked at me and he shook he said yeah you're right like one of the reps was clearly I even i think a couple more they were they got all of a sudden like it was like I don't know how to, what's that term? Like it, the, it dawns a mobble head. The epiphany. What's, yeah. They finally, it was like, yeah. Yeah. That, so that's good. I mean, that's good to hear that the, the representatives are, are at least sympathetic or at least can, can sense that, you know. They had no idea there was no THC in these products either. <laughs> it was just like they, it well, it's like misinformation that fuels the whole it, system. Of all they, all they mean, hear is that propaganda. It's like they don't. They don't research it like we do, and that's what we do. We, when we go to these hearings, we're that's educating. Why we go and represent. Yeah. So what about uh, I? I and heard- I think they liked us. Like I, yeah. I felt like you know this is a long hearing for them, long for all of us. We're sitting there for hours and hours and hours waiting to testify. I was over exhausted. Um, yeah, I got there late at two o'clock, and I was still there at like six <laughs> seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and I spoke at like five, and I spoke early. I was lucky. You know what I mean? Like. So these guys are and ladies are sitting there listening to us, and I think they actually, I don't think they mind us. I think they get what we're doing. I think they actually, when the opposition came out, the two mothers, who were actually nice ladies, they were totally against our cause, but they were nice ladies, and um, they kind of went on too long and were too, you know, ah, and, and I could see the reps kind of, gl- their eyes glaze over. I think that they were like, oh, I think they were like us almost. What, the was, their, like, what was their argument? Oh, the kids. Uh, oh, my God. Someone found a plastic bottle. Uh, one of the mothers found a plastic bong bottle it in front of her altered. house. And it's like, well, that's because <laughs> the pot's illegal now, so that didn't okay, stop your it. kid's an engineer. <laughs> your kid's making homemade bongs. Yeah. Isn't that? It's arts and crafts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was that's just it was the same nonsense that you hear year after year after year. The pot, yo, they also said that pot use has gone up in every state that it's been legalized. Hmm. And then they said that decrim and medical is legalization. That was what they were saying, too. They, they said that earlier in their speech, and that's what they were testing, that any place with medical or decrim, pot use has gone up. And the fact of it is, in like places like Boston, pot, and I, talk, I talked to them privately after, and I said, I said, where are you getting your statistics? Because what you're ignoring is that pot use has been going up since the 1980s. Since Reagan left office, Pot use has gone back to what it traditionally has always been. It's been a regular thing. People are again smoking and using a lot of cannabis. It's always been that way. Use has gone up. The trend is up over the last 20 years, and it's not stopping. It's continuing to go up. In places that it's gone up the most, well, of course they're going to vote for decrim and medical. Those people, that we get it. They're, those places are pot tolerant. Boston is pot tolerant. People don't care. That's what Dick Evans was talking yeah, about, pot, pot tolerance. Tol- Pot tolerance is what won decrim. Um, my mom voted for decrim. She's really not that pot tolerant, but she doesn't want her kids locked up. So that is some pot tolerance, even from her, who, who thinks right. pot is really bad. She still thinks that. But yeah. she voted for it. I mean, it still blows my mind that these so much, so much, so many resources and so much attention is still being paid to to fueling the the fire of, of misinformation and, and the you know state campaigns and school campaigns. I mean, I was just talking, hearing from you know an organization that you know was very well meaning, but they're still doing this. You know, uh, with the high schoolers, eighty one percent don't, and it's like it's a big campaign to convince people that. You know, 81% of teenagers don't smoke pot. All right, well, the other 19% do. And the question is, should they be arrested? I mean, should they be, wh- where, where's their protection? Where's lose their, student yeah, l- yeah, lose, you know. And that, that's the other point, too, that I try to quickly make. I mean, I, I was really quick, so I don't know what they really heard when I make one statement and move on to the next. But the students, the, the reason why all these students are here and all these young people, it's not because they just want to get high. They're already getting high if they want to. The The reason they're at these hearings is because they're the ones that are facing the drug war. They're mm-hmm. losing jobs for life. They're losing financial aid. They're seeing it happen to their friends. People are being stabbed and murdered. You know, I said that. I said, look at Sean. He got stabbed over this. This is what's happening. We're making kids drug dealers. You know, kids aren't selling tobacco and alcohol to each other and quitting part-time jobs. They're selling weed. And this needs to end. And uh, I think they heard it. And I think we're going to hear some of the 
the, the, the folks that spoke at this hearing that showed up from Suffolk University, uh, Nikki Smokes from Mass Can Normal, they're going to tell you why they're there, and we're going to listen to the yeah, video. This, this is, is a, this is a recorded clip. at the state. This is a clip of uh, Jeff Morris, who is the founder of Suffolk University Normal, and he's talking about, um, I mean, he's a student who has had to deal with the pot prohibition in his life and gone through seeing decriminalization happen, and this is him outside of uh, the marijuana legalization hearing this past Tuesday. Let's hope it works. We had a hearing on House Bill 1371, um, the taxation and regulation of cannabis in the state of Massachusetts, uh, submitted and written by Dick Evans, if I'm not, not wrong, I believe. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in there. This is really awesome. Unfortunately, I was able to write a testimony today, um, as always. Um, but as always, there's a ton of, ton of support in there. So the line to get in front of the board and the committee is pretty extensive. Um, so extensive to the fact that when I first arrived, there was no moderator at the front door to even take my testimony or for me to even sign up. So I'm assuming that's them telling the public that the list is way too big, um, which is awesome. It's exactly what we need. Um, we got Bill Downing inside passing out some, some regulation and taxation stickers. We got everybody wearing them so the board can know who is there and why they are here. Um, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be another long day for marijuana reform at the Massachusetts State House, but um, we're going to be here. I unfortunately have to go back to work right now. You know, I've got to pay the bills, but hopefully I'll get out at five. Um, I have a class tonight, but who knows? Maybe uh, see who's still here, pop back in, maybe I can even testify tonight, which would be really awesome. So, so how many uh, students do you think are here? You're, you're from Suffolk Normal. Huh? Yeah, from uh, from Suffolk. Or well, just in general, in Suffolk oh. and all the other schools. In general, um, you know, to be honest, there everybody that's standing up there right now is it looks like a student. It, it, the student population, I think, is one of the biggest ones I've seen at a hearing is today. Um, there was one last year that we had when I had when uh, Steve Epstein got in front of everybody and he had the huge mask flag and he's like this is why we're here and you know that was one of the, the the more fun days for the students because he was talking about the student name and the student voice and why we were there and why our reasons for being there um, but today it's really good for student voice there's a lot of people there from different schools I've seen a lot of familiar faces at a little a bunch of people and this is what it's really all about is to see everybody in, in you know BU and Emerson and Tufts and all these SSDP chapters and normal coming together one day the entire year to talk about marijuana reform in front of our representatives. Even the students going to class seem to, like, they, they, they know they oh, can't yeah. come in, but they're like, oh, what's yeah. up? We, we, we just walked right out of the door, and, uh, you know, a couple students just saw us, and they said, how's it going in there? And we're just like, oh, it's, we're still going, we're still fighting. So everyone's aware, but the people that aren't here are definitely still in class thinking about us, and that's and what that's do you think about, uh, someone recently said that Mass Can is dead. What Mass Can is what? Is dead. Dead. What do you think about Mass Can and the local community right now? Well, I guess as far as the interwebs go, as of yesterday, I haven't been able to get on the Mass Can website. Um, it's up now. It, so it is up now. Um, for 24, 24 hours, hours that'll happen. Um, but you know, Mass Can, Mass Can's never, never dead. I don't think it'll ever die. I think there's much more to Mass Can than the kind of BS that some people see in the meetings, or kind of the BS that's talked about outside of the meetings. Mass Can is so much more than somebody walking into one of those meetings and saying, we need to do this, and somebody yelling at that person that we need to do that. There's so much more to that. I, I know there's going to be new elections coming up sooner or later. There's going to be new leadership for Mass Can, whether people like it or not. And I think this is the point, and this is the time when that needs to happen. I think younger people need to get more involved with Mass Can. We have, it's, the, it's been not the older, older crowd running Mass Can, but it's kind of been the um, above the college student age running Mass Can. I think the student voice is extremely important as we can see inside the state house, and as we can see with Suffolk Normal here in full force. <coughs> All right, so once again, that was Jeff Morris, the founder of Suffolk University Normal, um, and he was talking a lot about uh, how much student support there is, of course, for legalization, and also I thought I, w I wanted to include that part that he said about Mass Can and about supporting Mass Can. We were all happy to go out and support Mass Can last night um, at their fundraiser at the Magic Room. It was excellent. Really awesome time, and they're having an upcoming election um, on March 31st, and we will actually be at that election um, you know, once again supporting the local movement and will not be broadcasting that weekend. So correct, just yeah, mark your calendars. And March thirty first. March thirty first. Uh, I just want to make a quick correction. That that uh, fundraiser last night was for the Normal Foundation. Mass Can and Normal are not the same thing. Well, it said two they announced multiple times it was a Mass Can and Normal fundraiser. They had. I'm not sure about that. No, they was advertised they were, as Normal. 
that that was um, a normal women's alliance thing, oh, okay. and uh, they were talking about uh, mass can support. You know, obviously locally, uh, oh, okay. a, a few of us so mass can were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, just want to make sure everyone knows all the good details. Well, but it's all right to no. be wrong sometimes. <laughs> I'm wrong often, often. You got that oh, We right. know. Yes, yeah. See, Simpson will tell you. Yes. How often am I wrong, Simpson? Oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Uh-oh. yeah. So I mean, if you want to, am I? Well, ask Simpson now. <laughs> Simpson, am I all right now? Are you? <laughs> no, well, you just. Uh, 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 <laughs> wow. Simpson uh, playing today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to we're say. Playing, we're playing inside games. we got to bring our listeners in on if we're going to do that. <laughs> but uh, sorry, you listen. <laughs> what, uh, what were you saying, Heather? You were, no, yeah. I was just saying, oh. um, you know, we should have people also going to the Mass Can uh, election on the 31st. Yes. yes and please. support the local. Yeah. yeah. Support the local folks the who are making Mass this Can happen. Normal. Definitely. <laughs> and I'm, you know. I'm very happy to hear there's so much support, and uh, we're building that that coalition that we need to go into medical and to go into legalization. And actually, that's that's our next topic of discussion. We really want to hear yep. what you guys have to say about this because there's some controversy. Yep. There's a little bit of of once again some cleavage in the movement cleavage. as usual. Yeah, well, I like that, that word. Plenty cleavage. of it plenty makes of it sound that good. on my side of the table. <laughs> uh, Everybody <laughs> smiles. There's also again. there's also yeah, <laughs> there's also a good discussion Ooh. going too. Keep I your mean, eyes averted, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is. I mean, it is prompting some discussion, um, which is what this is this this sort of uh conflict creative conflict is about um moving towards medical in november and legal and after. also um wanting there's you know groups of people uh myself included who are trying to get some public policy questions on the ballot locally uh in november um that and would ask if if Folks, you know, are in support of legalizing marijuana like alcohol. Explain what a public policy question is to people quickly. Well, a public policy question is basically like a poll. It's a poll that's binding. That's on Um, the ballot. I mean, not not legally binding, but it's it's binding in terms of you have to be a registered voter. It's on the local ballot. And you vote to, um, usually it says, you know, shall the state representative be instructed to vote in favor of a bill that would legalize marijuana but it like doesn't, alcohol. But it doesn't change the law. It doesn't change the law. It is legally non-binding. But it's however, a step. It's a good step. It's politically, good. it's pretty binding. This is it, what people do if they want to do grassroots to change a law. This is how we get attention nationally from funders that are looking at Massachusetts as a potential site, and, a potential state to go for full legalization. And Mass Can Normal and many other <laughs> activist groups in this state have traditionally done these... PPQs. They've done them over and over again, actually. It's amazing how many they've done. People like Steve Epstein and John Leonard. and There's been a lot of work done. They've d- they collected the ballots and done the PPQs to get state reps. We got uh, Shannon way back to sign on to these different bills and co-sponsor them because of the PPQs. We've moved a discussion. We're moving closer to legalization. We're seeing that we have polling results. We just did a poll with Mass Can Normal that showed... We have the majority support, easy majority, 58 to 62 percent mass support legalization, some form of it, easily. So the question is, this is where it comes, let's get into the point. You, you, You had one sentence for it. What does it come down to? We have a medical marijuana initiative in Massachusetts for this year, 2012. It's gonna pass, we know that, hopefully. (laughs) I say definitely no matter what, but you never know. And the thing is, this is a big campaign. We can't take it for granted. So the people that are funding it, Mm -hmm. that are running this medical marijuana campaign, say we would prefer if nobody runs these PPQ questions because they could confuse some some voters. One one voter out of 10 or 100 or whatever number it is might say, I don't really know what's going on. I'm going to vote. I see one for medical and I see one for legal. I'm going to vote for legal and not vote for medical. Or and I'm the medical is the either. only one that counts. They don't realize uh, that the medical is the only one that counts. The legal doesn't even really do anything but polling. So mm. they well, should have been voting for both of them. You know, maybe the word didn't get out. So they mm-hmm. want, they're basically saying our campaign people, the people that we pay big bucks to, are telling us that 
if we can, we'd rather not have PPQs. And if we can, we want to get the highest number we possibly can in Massachusetts. We want to try to break the record. We want to try to get the highest vote for medical marijuana ever in the nation. And if that happens... How can people not want to look at legalization? So we want we want people to weigh in on this. We're going to give everybody a chance in the room, definitely, to have their to you know talk about their opinions. So what's the question? Anyone, Frame the question because you framed it earlier. Should Matt? How, do you want to say it? Um, I don't remember exactly what I said earlier. I mean, the question is, um, should we forego the public policy questions? Uh, in favor of putting all of our efforts towards medical, knowing that in so doing, we might. Um, lose momentum in the push towards legalization. In and yeah, you have to talk more about that because I feel like I, I'm kind of making the so, case that we should forgo. And you're, I think, on the other side a little bit on this. And I want to, you make your case. Make that case, Heather. I mean, I mean, I think you said it. The, the problem is I, I don't see this as a mutually exclusive thing. I see that both, ha- you know, both discussions are valuable in the overall movement, in the overall political push to change the drug laws in the in Massachusetts and in the United States as a whole. And I'm not going to say I'm going to take this for granted, but it is pretty likely that we're going to soar through this in November in terms of medical. Why not get the ball rolling on the next step? And, you know, that's sort of my that's my argument about it. I can see both sides. I can see um, you know, I can see the hesitation uh, from from the medical community, from the or from the folks that are behind this campaign. But come on, we got to work together. This is all part of the same movement. It's all part of the same message. Um, I don't see how how one can really be that detrimental to the other. I see them as building. It's it's coalition building. It's yeah. working together. It's it's getting the word out there, yep. wh- whichever method it takes. And that's what we want. That's what we ultimately yeah. want in Massachusetts. We want we want legalization. We want to examine the drug laws and, and reject prohibition and say, no, we need we need something better. We deserve it. So I mean that's my that's my little spiel on that. But I would like to hear from our listeners. Absolutely call Six one seven six oh six four one two two. We want to hear from Juicy you. Topic. What, should we do these PPQs? Should Mass can do them? Should other people do them? Do you support them? Uh, I I can't decide now. I think Heather really made a good case. <laughs> I, I, I think she did I, too. I want to hear from yeah, Nikki. Yeah. Nikki Spokes. Um, I, Nikki def- Sp- I definitely agree with Heather. Um, you know, medical was a push. You know, earlier on in prohibition days because we want to decriminalize the patient and set them free. Um, mm-hmm. But these are also two different industries. Do so you want to go to uh, a medical dispensary when you you want? guidance to be healed (laughs) and recreation and criminalization is two totally separate industries Mm -hmm. and I think that we can take a step back from medical I know that we're very 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 close to legalization but medical is also important and you know Wow. I definitely am there to support. Is this, a, is this one of the first times none of us are agreeing here? We're all kind of like... I'm in agreement. You're agreeing with Heather. <laughs> I understand. The women are agreeing. But I'm kind of... <laughs> oh, still- oh, the women. <laughs> us I'm women in and our now. wild, oh, boy, wild ideas. But, what are you- yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Nice. All right, Mike Simpson. I know Mike Simpson was getting up. What's there for that? Very nice. <laughs> oh, Very nice. you just killed me. I deserved <laughs> it. <laughs> what do you have to say about all this? Thing? Well, first of all, you know, see, anytime you got two competing groups for the same thing, right? You have friction, and all you I like f- that friction. No, I don't. <laughs> for the She's simple reason, us. for the simple reason why I don't like the friction yeah. is because you can't get anything done. Um, a lot of people they got their own agendas on this. I, I don't see I, it as competition. But uh, it has been. And 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 matter of fact, it almost led to uh, a lot of boo-ha-ha in our meetings mm. with people from the medical and uh, the people on my side who just believe in having it, everything yeah. legal. Yeah, there's truth to that. Yeah, I think that. So what do we do from here? I mean, here, we Mike? saw that what on, do we do? on Proud wait, 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 Let's go back let to me, the I'm Mike, just, Mike, 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 it. Mike. I'm cutting you off. You put it well, no, no. I want you to stop. Where do we go? On the PPQs. Do you want to do them or not? I just yeah, I think they're necessary because they let everybody know what's going on. And All I'm right. going to try yeah. to tell you something. I've been trying to say this for several weeks. I don't know where you get your facts from, stuff like that. There's more people that smoke pot around me every day than those that don't. I see them all day. I'm outside with my art or doing whatever I do. 
24-7 most of the time. Everywhere I go, I have not been anywhere and even out of this state where people don't smoke it. You know, they grow it, they smoke it, they use it for various reasons. And the ones that don't, guess what? Around me, they're in the minority, and they really don't count, and they really don't care. Oh, guy, man. <laughs> guy, you don't smoke, a, you don't count. Both <laughs> Mike Simpson. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a guy that came. And he's a lawyer. He yeah. comes through the comments. Right. He told me. Oh. He says, well, you know, pot is bad for you. This guy, he's... Ain't as old as I am, right? I said, come on, man. You smoke pot in college. Yeah, well, it's bad for you. I, I work on this uh, group that where people are, they're getting their lives together because they had drug abuse. I said, I'm not talking about dope fiends. I said, we're potheads. You ain't got no drug abuse. <laughs> this, uh, uh, pothead. I said, come on, man. Knock that off. Knock he, that off. He said, well, you know, alcohol and heroin. I said, that ain't got nothing to do with pot. I says, I don't care about them people. I says, I'm only talking about potheads. All right. Yeah. Mike Simpson doing it. That's what he does. So, Look at He's looking dapper today, too. He's all dressed so. up. He's got a tie on, nice scarf. You're on a roll, Simpson. Nah, I'm just uh, getting ready for my weekly show, and I'm going somewhere, and I've been promoting my stuff, so I had to be able to... A semi little fetish today. I'm more fetish tonight because I'm going somewhere. I just so. said he had a nice vest and he yeah. goes in talking about the fetish. We, we were supposed to save the Mike Simpson moment till later, towards the end of the show. You already had it. You're all done. You, you, yeah. you killed it. I'm you, you did your work. I'm always doing my work. All right. So, what else is. Uh, we, we want the phone call. 617 606 4122. We had an instant feedback from. Uh, Joe, Joe said, uh, I think it's great you guys mentioned Julia and Peter. Thank you for recognizing True Passion. He was listening in. Thank yeah, you. We're Thanks for be... listening. Thank you so much for that instant yeah, feedback, you. Joe. We're going to be reading, once again, we're going to be reading a Peter McWilliams poem towards the end of the show. Um, we know we have a lot of his fans are yeah. always like Peter's page and Julia. Are he helps a lot of us. It's weird. Like, fans. It's such a weird thing that we came onto this. Like, I remember Peter McWilliams and I really liked him. And now it's like, like I'm really reading his words and saying, shit, like, this is what I need to focus on and read it and live it every moment, mm -hmm. every moment, every, not you just, start writing not just like half the time, because half the time I get Bonnie Frank. What <laughs> if I do it every time? <laughs> Thank you, Peter McWilliams and, and that whole. I think you need to uh, start writing some poetry, Mike. Well, we're going to read it today. Yeah. I think that's a good first that's step. True. Read the best first. <laughs> read the best and then work on your stuff. <laughs> and we're going to be we're going to be spitting some live poetry with Steve Money from Slightly Stupid yeah. coming up next. It's almost the 420 break um, and we'll be having him live on the show afterwards. And we're once giving again, away tickets we are Lift Fest. Yeah, we're giving away two tickets to Lift Fest. To earn them, you got to call in and you got to freestyle something, just spit something, whatever, get a little high first. You'll be, you'll be lyrically limber, ready to go, and, uh, you know, and you'll get some two free tickets to go skiing, snowboarding, out in the mountains, get away for a weekend, have a great time. 617-606-4122. And, uh, yeah, we're going <laughs> to, uh, why don't we, uh, we really haven't scheduled this too tightly today, so why don't we... Play some music, do our 420 break, mm -hmm. uh, play a little more music, and come back with. I get you, Ken. I yeah, we're gonna we're, <laughs> we're gonna put all we're gonna put some slightly stupid on you know as well, and uh, a little bit of Biggie Smalls. I think. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. we're gonna represent. We're, what? Yeah, we gotta do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that right now. All right. All right, we'll be back. We'll be back. on regularradio.com. Two, two punkhead nation, nation. Two punkhead nation. nation. From the unregular radio studios in downtown Boston, here's Mike Can and Heather Mack. Back live on the Two Hot Heads on Cannabis show on regularradio.com, 617-606-4122. We have a special guest. We just heard music from the McLovins, uh, Cohesive. They're playing at uh, the Lift Fest next weekend when we'll be interviewing Barney, uh, Congressman Barney Frank. Uh, the big Lift Fest next weekend in New Hampshire. We're giving away tickets to that show today. And uh, before that, we heard Slightly Stupid Mellow Mood. And uh, we heard uh, some of the music earlier today, and we're going to hear more of it. And on the phone, we have a special guest. His name is C Money. He is uh, from the Boston Mass area, from my understanding. And he is in Slightly Stupid, who uh, the last two tours they did were with Cypress Hill and uh, Snoop Dogg, they were headlining with those guys. And uh, he's performed with Snoop Dogg, no Snoop Dogg. You see him in videos on YouTube. 
He's involved in activism. He's spoken out for our cause of legalization. Very happy. First time talking to him. C Money, are you on the phone? Yes, sir, I am. Hello, Boston. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing very good. Actually, uh, I'm calling from the, uh, the slightly stupid shop we have out here in San Diego. And uh, we're playing a little benefit show, barbecue style, this afternoon. So, that's awesome. Sure assembling and, you know, normal activity. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Wow. I wish I could teleport. That sounds like a, sounds like a blast. Is it a, is, is it a benefit for anything in particular? It's just a okay. get outside and get rowdy barbecue. You're making us. Uh, actually, a, a friend of ours uh, had passed away to, to, to bring money in for his family. Um, you know, he has kids and whatnot. So it's all for a good cause. Wow. Awesome. The power of music, I think, to rally people is, is always good. Well, let's hear it for that. Yeah, Seriously. Absolutely. This is a fucking brutal time, and, and people, yeah. We need all the love we can Especially get. Especially in those moments. And you're making us jealous over there talking about barbecues. You know, it's, it's March in Boston right here. So as a former Boston resident, can you, <laughs> how does it compare over there on, in uh, San Diego? <laughs> now choose your words you know, carefully. It, it's, it's okay, it's interesting. I, I shoveled a lot of parking spaces out in Somerville there when I lived. Uh, you know, and I was in John Brown's body before I was in Southern Stupid. Oh, wow. Another, That's awesome. Yeah, uh, we know reggae that. band from the area. And, um, you know, when it's, it's a perfect day every day. You forget that first spring day when everyone runs out and it's just like <laughs> going crazy, you know, and it's just like that feeling of it. But I, I will say it's extremely nice out right now and uh, I'm wearing shorts, please. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in. Actually, we went, we had, I, I saw a whole bunch of short sleeves the other day. We had a 62 degree day this week. So honestly, we can't complain that much, but uh, more power to you. What, what made you, uh, you know, how did, how did you start getting involved with uh, Slightly Stupid? I, I also, I didn't know you were in John Brown's body before. I love yeah, John Brown's that's body. that's what's killing me. I'm I, a huge I, fan. Yeah. I think I know someone that's friends with you guys. That you, uh, might be, do you know a kid named Josh Walker, by chance? Yeah. Yeah. I went to high school with him. I wrestled with his brother and stuff. It's funny. <laughs> that's so funny because I remember, cool. the, yeah, yeah, he, he loves you guys. Um, wow. So you, you did uh, your last tour with Snoop Dogg, right? Um, yeah, actually, this last summer we were out with Revolution and Cisco and Swayze, but um, the summer before Wait, Cisco was with, uh, of, of Thong Jesus Song fame? <laughs> madness, and uh, it was a really, I mean, that and Cypress Hill kind of, I mean, I grew up really idolizing both those bands, and they were a part of both the first mixtapes I know I had, and it, it was kind of weird in that sense, but I guess if, you know, you can believe in a dream and you can believe that you stick to your guns long enough, which I think carries over into any movement, whether it's changing a law or getting something that's unfair changed. It's about the persistence, and you will see it through. Yeah. And I've you've certainly been persistent about it. I mean, this is something that you guys have been uh, you know, advocating for, uh, you know, legalization for a long time now. I remember seeing you guys. I actually saw you play live at the Worcester Palladium like five or six years ago. I was like, you know, really young in like high school or something, and I saw you and Fishbone. Both both of you guys are uh, are are very outspoken in the movement. Um, you know, our our music, our musicians and activists. And and how did that how did that come to be? How did you start to get involved in the legalization movement as a band and as an individual? Why is it so important to you? Um, for various reasons. Uh, first, for me, and I think. You know, we all have our own little stories as how we're into it, but my father's a, a disabled vet of the Vietnam War, and he also, uh, he's a diabetic, so uh, I think that, I, I know that I grew up with him very much, you know, telling me this is, my, this is what levels me out. You know, I could be on a bunch of pills, and I could be on a bunch of things, but really when it comes down to it, when I need to eat, you know, I, I smoke a bowl, and then I, my appetite's there. My dad's one of the hardest working Americans that I know, you know, he's always been a source uh, of inspiration in that regard. And he's, he's, a, he's an actor, so he's in the arts as well. And uh, it's weird because then you become an adult and you just kind of, I guess what they say, birds of a feather. Um, it, it does help when you're making music if, if you, you know, you have the same kind of uh, leisure activities as the rest <laughs> of the guys in the band. You know, yeah. the <laughs> element of social, you know, coming together. But then you also realize, I mean, for me, I've been harassed crossing yeah. borders and you know we've been pulled over on the road and 
really, in the end of the day, it's about quality of life, I think. And when you think about the silliness of the persistence of someone going to the ends of the earth to basically put down a bunch of people who would like to bring commerce to the economy and truly live a, in a free society like we're taught, you know, that the Constitution tells us that, you know, if we disagree with something, we have to change it. it, it we're allowed to at least bring it to the table and vote on it if, if it's a thing. And, and they go to great lengths to put that down. And I'm not quite sure as to the motivation yet. Um, here in California, we just watched the federal government come in and shut down a lot of dispensaries that were generating like $10,000 on a bad day. And all these people were willing, to, not all of them, of course, but most were willing to pay the taxes and to play the game how it's supposed to be played. Um, I would love to personally see it mirrored like alcohol so that you know alcohol from the time it is made to the time it is sold is taxed probably 20 times uh, on a state and a federal level and as would we <laughs> yeah, it was a little disheartening to see you know them go through and i know a bunch of dispensary owners and like they came in with masks on and they ripped all the security cameras out so that there was no evidence as to like how they did it and it, yeah. it, it was kind of like aren't there meth labs that you guys should be out you know doing this too instead yeah. of Literally, people who were just selling and, and, you know, bringing a product, selling it to patients who are all registered. Who want it. I mean, it, it makes you think. But it also knows that we're stirring the pot. And if the hornets are coming like that, then we must be making noise. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And that's what I mean. I, I love to see this slightly stupid how well you guys have done because you have supported causes. You have supported normal. You have supported this movement. And... uh it does make a difference, you know? It really does. And uh, I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for doing this show today, too, C-Money, calling in. Oh, no problem. I'm old. You get me started, I can't shut up. But uh, oh, we- I'm <laughs> definitely something that's very passionate for me. So. <laughs> we don't want you to well, shut up, We don't up, want actually. you to shut up. Yeah. We have so many more questions. <laughs> I have another question for you. This is the, you have a laugh at this question, but I think it's a good one. <laughs> Who, when you, when you, you've been on tour with Slightly Stupid and Snoop Dogg and Cypress Hill, I don't want to get you in trouble though. So if this is too much, <laughs> tell us to stop. But who smokes the most? Who uses the most cannabis on tour? <laughs> Among those three groups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good That'd answer. Stupid. <laughs> wow. I just actually did a the Nug Life uh, radio show out here, and I was part of the Earwax competition, and uh, I'm a three time bong rip champion. So I'm wow. Very proud of that. Oh, I love that's that. That's an impressive lung that's, capacity it, there, yeah. though, too. That's like that's a Michael Phelps style. You got. <laughs> well, I am a trumpet player, so it's all part. Of that's the true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> what is this? Wait. So, what kind of a competition was this? What was the what were the stipulations <laughs> to win well, a bong? Uh, this time, actually, they they changed it, but this time it was a Karate Kid theme. Uh, <laughs> you had to basically. Do a crane kick and recite your favorite line from Karate Kid while exhaling. And, uh, while exhaling? Is that what you yes. said? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is complicated. I know. This sounds like like do it, do like some gymnastics. with your <laughs> Go underwater. Level. I'm trying to think about like some stoner Olympics right now. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm, what it pretty much is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trademarking that. We're going to do that on regular radio and two hot heads on can- yeah. cannabis. See money. Uh, we'll have, we'll, yeah, exactly. We'll have the stoner Olympics. You heard it here first. <laughs> but you guys, you guys, so you outsmoked everyone? Really? I mean, I I I, I, <laughs> I, I hold it. the title. I have my little award, uh, <laughs> and I'm always up for a challenge. So. I've seen it too on YouTube. <laughs> I was checking that out, some of that stuff, and yeah. Yeah, I was true. watching you. I was watching the video of the Snoop Dogg's uh, smoking closet. That, that's what I'd like to know. What was it? What is it like being in Snoop Dogg's smoking closet? Let me live vicariously through you <laughs> right now. Yes. Tell me all about it. Yes. Well, the good part was that I, the director, I guess, you know, had all the the props set up and they were all in the room and they were like, wait a minute, we got, we got the real deal. Let's just get rid of these props. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so you guys have a big festival coming up too, up in, uh, it's in New England. Where is this? Do you, do you have the, uh, info on it? Burlington, I think. Burlington. Somewhere that's right. Burlington, there. Vermont. It would be in Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> the green mountains live up to their name. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, we're, we're I'm really stoked to get back to New England. I mean, I'll be honest, I really do miss it. Uh, and there was such an awesome, and still is, such a really good scene of music and, and, and stoners. 
so I miss it. <laughs> Were you involved in in legalization politics and and drug you know drug law politics while you lived over in? Did you say you lived in Somerville? Yes, ma'am. I oh, think, that's I'm awesome. proud to say that I made it in high times when I was eighteen. I was in. Oh my God! So did I. <laughs> and we played the uh, <laughs> the pot rally there. The Freedom the, Rally. The common. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's you know, so being cool. in a band like John Brown's Body, you know, mm-hmm. it stirs up who John Brown was. Who again, uh, you know, an American principle over and over again. Whether it's slavery, women's rights, racism, any of them, if it's unfair and it's obvious, you know, self-evident, that's how it's worded in, yeah. in the Constitution. Yeah. It cannot be argued. Then you know, hey, what the heck are they doing trying to stop us? Yeah, so, I, I I've got a question I for you. A city like Boston that's more revolutionary. You ask me. I re- <laughs> related like to that. Boston and the Freedom Rally <laughs> that you performed at the John Brown's Body. It, and, and the movement here, I mean, we've decriminalized marijuana. That freedom rally is so big now. I don't know if you're aware, but we have two stages now. Heather actually performed last year at the event. I did. Um, it's amazing. We have we have more people out, you know, and, but I think really a lot of it has to do with this decrim law where we're not getting arrested for smoking cannabis in public, basically. Um, what 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 do you think about it? Would, would you guys actually consider coming out here and playing the freedom rally? Slightly stupid or see money? For sure, I and mean, we're all—that's the thing. Yeah. We're really pretty much open to all of that because it's kind of to me. I hope that it's really just a snowball effect. Um, you know, first of all, I would love to just like—it it was such a relief to even know that that wall was passed. Um, you know, I can say I definitely rolled through you know Boston when it wasn't like that, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it, it's. I think everywhere we had like 17 states that are now decriminalized, and you know places like Colorado and California when the dispensaries were operating. It was insane. It was like, you know, my dad came out to visit, and he couldn't believe it. It was like he really had to pinch himself <laughs> because this movement was really happening. And that's what's shocking, again, to me, that they went to these great lengths to shut it all down. Even, like, they, I, I've heard the stories of people who had paid up to $200,000 in taxes were given the money back by the federal government because yep. they're making some kind of political statement here. Yep. And it's like, what are, are we in a position to be giving back money when we need it like this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like that's why we have to legalize it because they, they we we have to we have to over encumber the government. They can't enforce it anymore because we're passing medical right now in Massachusetts, 2012. That's the next year, but we were looking at legalization. Everyone is, and uh, that's what we need to do. The the medical isn't enough apparently because they can shut down the dispensaries. And take people's no, and I money. Agree. And it, I mean, do I need a medical license from a doctor to go buy a bottle of whiskey? Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> no. no. So make it 21 and we'll make it just like the alcohol. You know, it can be regulated. It, I mean, it's quality control. It just, it's so obvious. It man. is. <laughs> like, and this was passed on to me by my father who, you know, this has been the argument for, I remember Years, the first yeah. time I ever saw a normal logo on his, like, you know, briefcase. <laughs> like what's that? It spelled <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's, a problem, yep. That's awesome. I actually, I'd like to know. I mean, what do you think in terms of this legalization? Uh, you know, there's there's always been a bit of an East Coast West Coast rivalry, and you being from both sides of the pond. Who do you? Who are you putting money on to be the first state to legalize it? Because I know you guys were wicked involved in Prop 19. My boyfriend was over there working as a campaign organizer for Prop 19, and you know we all wanted that to happen. And you know it was a big, it was a disappointment. I mean, not that it's the end, but we know we know it's coming. So who's going to be first? Is it going to be California? Is it going to be California or, or Massachusetts or East Coast uh, or West Coast? What do you think? I'm going <laughs> to flip it around, uh, and because this is, I think, the truth. It is the United States. And I think now what needs to happen is when any state makes a move, like California just got moved and spanked, now it's up to the other states to analyze the situation, see what went wrong, see how that they can then come and hit their Congress people and their senators exactly. to do what was done already, but learn from our mistakes so that then when they hit a brick wall, then another state picks up where they left off. And if we see this happening, it's going to be like a new wave of, cohesion which i think is missing from our society right now yeah yeah absolutely that's that's it boom 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 we're all working <laughs> and even other countries I mean, it's all long and, you know yeah dude it's uh it's it's uh, i think we're intelligent beings and we want to 
create a good world for our children. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. A world with no fear. We're we're one hundred percent behind you and, and af- appreciate everything that you've been doing for the movement, for coming on our show. It's yeah. awesome. Well, we and ha- likewise, because you guys are a big arm about arming the people with the knowledge to just say, Hey, just get involved. Get involved with your local politics. You, there's more to be done with the local scene than sitting back and waiting for the federal exactly. government or some president to change everything. It's like that's so un American right there. It's like mm-hmm. come on, get with it, getting informed right on. every day. Going yeah. both Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we both are district attorneys. We yep. both the sheriffs of the counties. Rarely do people really actively partake in those elections, but those are the big ones that change your day to day. Absolutely. So, and we're making moves all the time. I mean, stuff is happening all the time for people to get behind. I mean, Massachusetts has a has a medical uh, ballot question that's gonna you know gonna be in November. We're gonna get to vote and it you know pass. most likely pass medical Easy. in Massachusetts. So stuff is happening. We're moving forward. I mean, Colorado, Washington. We got states all over the country. I mean, it it really is an exciting time to be involved in this fight, to be fighting this fight. And it's always uh, you know better when you have. Awesome people by your side. So, yeah. thank you. <laughs> That's what it's gonna take. We gotta just all step up and support each other. So, right on. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we had we had a contest. We were oh, trying yeah. to get people to call in to to freestyle uh, with you about to six win two one, tickets. Six one seven. What's the number? Six one seven six zero six four one two two. We had callers earlier. We got any callers coming through right now, Newman? We do not. Right. Oh man, people are <laughs> intimidated by the. Yeah. She put out a challenge. This is a Heather Mac challenge. So let's this say it again. It. 617-606-4122. We have tickets to give away to this big festival next weekend. Yep. And uh, Heather, what was the contest? Tell tell C Money what the contest. Oh, well, That's I- why people are scared. <laughs> They're scared. I so I put out the challenge to our listeners to come on and freestyle on the radio. And I myself am a rapper and a performer and I know how difficult it is. So I said that I would I would freestyle with you as well if uh, if someone else would, would, you know, show up and, and Call us in, call in, and give it a shot. But <laughs> uh, you know I think what? I, I would, I w- see, I would want the tickets, but I'd be afraid myself because I, I can't freestyle <laughs> next to Heather Mack. <laughs> <laughs> next to see money. Can't see money. <laughs> well, you play trumpet, right? But do you are you uh, are you dabble in hip hop at all? I mean, besides your band, obviously. But do you ever rap or, or is that trumpet is your thing? No, no. Actually, I, I have I'm my own little to- project that we started in Boston, um, and. Uh, I find myself, I mean, trust, the name did come because I think I wanted to be a, a rapper someday when I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, hip-hop is such an important part of, to me, you know, my up- upbringing and my musical chops. That's why I was such an honor with Snoop Dogg and Cypress. But, um, Absolutely. yeah, I'm down. You want to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you want to spit some of that, some of your your solo stuff? If you, Now's the time to do it. Maybe get get yeah, people no. in the mood. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. We're actually working on we're, we got a bunch of albums that are coming out. This like stupid one. We, I'm working on my own. I got my brother's Same. album that's coming out, and uh, he actually wrote a doo-wop song about sent to me. Uh, so uh, there's a bunch of good stuff I think that's on, in the in the oven right now about to come out. And I, I want to make sure you guys are well armed with all the music. That's so. awesome. Wait, is there a beat? Newman, do you have a beat you can even put out? <laughs> we're we 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 going to see how C Money does with Heather Mac. Can oh, we do man. that? Can we challenge it? Oh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> can we do that together? Is I don't that know. possible, C Money? <laughs> if we get a beat going? I'm ready. All right, he's ready. He's gonna, he wants it to. See if I can find something. Oh, God. We should have brought this up to our producer earlier. We always do this to him. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we just. We just the, uh, <laughs> That's the artist's role to keep the producers on. There we go. See? There we go. The, the weight is worth it. He's got something. <laughs> Alright, you have to you have to rap too, Mike, then. If that I have to rap? <laughs> I'm on the THC show. I can't rap, but I'm here trying to hook up great things with C Money and Heather Mack. <laughs> Yo. <Wait. laughs> Ladies first, ladies first. Who's first? Ladies, ladies. ladies. Oh, ladies first. All right, all right, all right. Okay. (laughs) Yo, 
Yo, I'm so savage, smoking that sweet cabbage. Brain roughed up and ravaged, I'm ragged. And I'm spastic, I'm so tragic. You be on that shit, puffing that magic green. Pass the mic, pass the bean to me. Shit, we in the... Oh, oh come oh. on! Oh, just... Here we go again. <laughs> that was awesome, though. <laughs> that was... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, girl, that was crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yo. <laughs> All right, your turn, your turn. We got cut off. Keep it going. 617, want to hear you make some noise. Legalize herbs, don't play with no toys. Be a dose, get with it. Get to the game, slightly stupid, come around. Yo, we spreading the fame. This generation is for real. We smoke the herb. That's what we want to do because we kick into the curve. Alcohol and the ecstasy. The pills that be making our kids so weak. To make this noise be heard all across the land. Join normal all people if you can. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, Woo. Two hides on cannabis. You see money <laughs> from Slightly Stupid. Check him out at slightlystupid.com. And his own music, See Money. Look him up on YouTube. You see his music. It's sick. It's, he's doing it. Thank you so, so much. Ill. We totally put you on the spot, and you just killed it, man. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> hey, I learned what I know in Boston. I cut my teeth there. I love Massachusetts, and it's an honor to be able to do this. I'll be real. And I still got my 617 number, so. Hell yeah. yeah. yeah we'll, Hell we'll, yeah. Next represent. time you're here, we definitely. We well, we love handle. you on the East Coast, and we can't wait. I can't wait for your festival. That tell Tell us one more time about the festival where we can see you performing at. That's coming up, the most the most uh, upcoming one. And then yeah, I think everything's on the on the internet and you know, all the details. I'm kind of I'm Captain Stoner over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's all good. Yeah. Oh, we are today. Yeah. Everything <laughs> should be there, and I know we're gonna be definitely in the hood. We're going to Australia like the next day. That's so insane. I won't be able to but I'll be back well, in you, Boston kicking it, and you guys need to come out to San Diego. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Cover, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, check. You know, uh, we want to see you at the Freedom Rally. We'll do this on stage. We'll do this again. We, I mean, this would be incredible to have you guys come and and rock out and maybe have a, you know, John Brown's body reunion too. We're we're doing big things on the Two Hot Heads on Cannabis. Thank you so much. See you, money. What a pleasure. You rock. I think mean, this, uh, this might be a day you and me um, freestyle on stage here. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. You heard it here first. I'm counting on that. On regularradio.com. <laughs> Two hotheads on cannabis. Thank you, Sea Money. Thank you. Thank have you a great. Guys. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow, that was great. That was awesome. We find dynamite people and make them even more dynamite. He was, so that guy is amazing. That was He's absolutely great. That was incredible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, got to, and, got to spit some shit, got to <laughs> yeah. make some moves, hopefully. Uh, and you know what we're going to be doing later? What? We're going uh, to be talking about another amazing person, Peter, Peter McWilliams. We're going to be reading that quote. We're, yes, we're we surrounded by goodness and here. And we still have these tickets to give away. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. 4122 and uh, we have some more music from Slightly Stupid, right, Newman? Uh, yeah, I uh, didn't actually cue that up. Oh, you got something well. else? We'll play that later. Yeah, later. I have a request, actually, from our own Sarah Sparks, because uh-huh. uh, International Women's Day was last Thursday. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what, yes, what, what, what's the song? It's Alanis Morissette. There we go. Hell yeah! Mary yeah. Jane. Oh, I love her. All right. On radio.com. You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis with your hosts, Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. All right, and we're back on unregularradio.com, Two Hotheads on Cannabis. We just had an incredible interview with C Money of Slightly Stupid and John Brown's Body Fame. And uh, we had a little freestyle going on, a little freestyle session, and... uh, the contest was if, if someone had the guts to call in and freestyle with C-Money. And he, he's off the phone now, but we do have a caller, uh, KB, who is, uh, we're going to get a uh, beat queued up for KB and, uh, and see what he's got. Uh, he, he's going to spit something to win the lift tickets. This is a big festival this upcoming weekend. It includes a free snowboard and ski pass at, at Whaleback Mountain and about 20, 20-something bands. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. 
and uh, Dex Dexter from the uh, Dexter from uh, Unregular Radio is going to be hosting it, and uh, so we just want to see what you got, KB. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this I'm is going to. I'm ready when any time you guys are. All right, this is going right. to be a slow jam, okay? I'm a gonna, slow you're going to hear jam. it start, and then you can just go. Uh, all right. Uh, well. Couldn't tell you any difference when I'm flowing. The game's rent with new. Who's on so it? Broken, putting pieces back together. Effort switching climax overseas in different weathers. Whether or not cold or hot. Different time zones at the clock go. For sure, I clock dough. Everywhere I go, ho shows. If I blow dough, fresh in that polo. Like to stay on the low, but my goals when I'm after. Remembering times on the grind, dimes make it laughter. For the people of B, every line, each chapter. Yeah. 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 That is magic. Natural is just natural disaster. Oh, he's still going. Who the Matrix. Try to live life fast to fight if you might crash. And all my right. mind throw the right jab. All right, all, all right, right. Kevin, You know what? Kevin, was... I got a question for you. Can you do something for us for the two hotheads and see how money? Yeah, yeah, can yeah. You, can, can you, you uh, can you give us a, a free a freestyle for two hotheads? Two right hot heads. Two hot heads are with a weed show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, 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 wait, wait, so, wait, y'all want me to spit about weed? Yeah, spit no. about weed and spit about the two hot heads on cannabis. That's what we would, this is the show that you're, you're in on is THC, two hot heads on cannabis. So, throw that in there. <laughs> you know, we all appreciate the, you're very close to winning these all tickets. All right, we'll give KB. this a shot. Here we go. Again. <laughs> uh, fresh, fresh game, fresh fitted with the name on the brim. Those who standing out when I'm getting in, in, I'm in the zone. So let you know, homes, I'm chilling and while I'm at it. All I see is a bunch of fly women, some freaks. Who's giving Dawn life, 59 fitted, and strapping a light jacket before I'm going swimming. Rolling doobie, <laughs> chilling on the campus. Ready? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah, we love it. We love All it. All right, we're gonna we give him the tickets you. anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're done. You won the tickets. You earned them, KB. So we need your full name. Um, I guess we we'll actually you on the we're line. gonna keep you on the line. We're gonna have you hold on. We're gonna uh, come yeah, back. I would, I would, I would go longer if y'all want me. So I'm warming up. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, what, where can we find more info about you, KB? You seem like you're uh, doing stuff. Well, we'll, can we look you up on Facebook or uh, you have a website, or anything like that? Um, yeah, you can look me up on um, Facebook. My my Twitter's at the f- official KB. So you can look me up on Twitter. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, my my um my like page is actually KB, but my my real page you can look up. Look me up, Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown. Um, and, and I've got his phone number too. All right. Do you do you oh, wrap yeah. around? Do you wrap around the Boston area? Do you perform at all? Is there anywhere we can catch you? Is there? <laughs> is there you? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. I've been um, I performed around um. Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, I I really haven't did any shows out here like that in Mass, but I do. I am performing in um in in this this one event that's coming up out out in Lynn, Mass. Um, it's called the Stage Is Yours. It's, it's going to be April six. I'm going to be performing over there on Maple Street. Awesome, cool, man! Yeah, Thank well, you. Check well, it out. We got a lot of listeners so everywhere. You, Unregularradio.com. I know you were calling in to to talk to Unregular Radio. And, uh, we're and the now two we just got you ho- some, yeah. uh, some free, free lift free tickets. Free publicity. We're two hotheads <laughs> on cannabis. Look us up on Facebook, too, and join us and, and post your stuff. And people will want to know who you are after listening to you yeah, on the show. Yeah, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Stay on the line. Yeah. Stay on the line. Um, we'll stay on the line. We'll be back in a minute. Let's play some music, Newman, and we'll come back. You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis with your hosts, Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. All right. We have had an amazing show here today, I have to say. This is an extra special edition of uh, Two Hot Heads on Cannabis. and uh, We've been having those a lot lately. I know. it's Pretty been, regularly. Love is in the air. And actually, we have a, we have a poem about love that we're going to read in, in a, a little bit, bit that's yeah. written by uh, Peter McWilliams. And, and something, something that uh, I think a lot of people can get something from and uh, maybe live with. Live, live to. Like, measure it. Mm-hmm. Use that to measure your life. And... Uh, I'm I'm using this for myself today. I'm gonna stick to this from now on. Yeah. Uh, this is like you know how you people sign like pledges or sign like uh, 
you know, like they do uh, on the first of the year. What do you call those? They New Year's resolution. resolution. This is my resolution. I'm <laughs> gonna read this out loud today. Heather's gonna actually read it. And yeah, uh, the Peter, Peter's yeah. page and all sorts of people have been posting um, on our Facebook page, and it's been great to to hear the support that we have. We we have lots of stuff that came up on the Facebook page, and I just wanted to give quick shout outs to. Um, the one one thing that we posted about uh, that has been reposted about is um, getting online and voting for Mass Can Normal as the number one local cause yeah, in Massachusetts Mass and Boston. So yeah, one, yeah, let's do that. Um, you guys can can vote on the phoenix.com. Uh, Boston Phoenix um, is doing their poll. Uh, you can vote multiple times. And, and just look once at a look day. at today. We had uh, C Bunny on. Yeah. And, and, and one of his first experiences, it seems like, with marijuana reform and what they're doing, slightly mm-hmm. stupid. They really had an effect in California with getting Snoop Dogg involved and getting all this going on. The work that they're doing. It, yep. it started with he with played the, at the Freedom sticker. Rally at well, the free, uh, yeah, yeah the normal sticker, the normal sticker, and, and, and the Freedom Rally case. on the Boston Common Mass Can Normal. Yep. It all comes back to them, so we support them. Um, also, let's see. Um, oh, another thing that came up this week that, you know, if you guys check out the Facebook page, and uh, we posted a, a, a video of, uh, of Quiet Desperation, which was uh, a, a, a TV show. You're in this show. one. You're yeah, in this one, Yeah, shameless self-promotion, but it's you, good. Mr. Can, have also been involved, and oh, that's yeah. how I met Nikki and Sarah and all these other oh, people. So many people. Rob Patillo yeah. and his brainchild, Quiet Desperation, and there's a new and This episode. is a good one, too. It's like really some of them, good. You know, some of them I kind of get lost in sometimes. He <laughs> puts out a lot of stuff, uh, but true. some of it is genius. This, and this is really a really, fun. really good one. And I love it. It does it's feature myself and features my band, Solo Sex, rapping at the beginning and singing uh, some some uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's it was awesome. really it was it's really awesome. fun to do. Yeah. So go check that out. That's on our that's on our website. Um, also freemassmedia.com in the building. They uh, Nikki just reminded me to let you guys know there are there are clips, video clips from the legalization hearing on Tuesday that you can go check out. There's some on freemassmedia.com and also on mikecan.net. I neg- um, I neglected to mention that, you know why? Why? Because the the video is me speaking. And why would you neglect to mention? I don't know. You get self conscious. I'm like Julia a little bit. The from Peter's page. Psh, she please. just actually sent us a message. No, it's true. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, like you you think you can do good and you want to do good and you and it's exciting. I like doing that stuff. But at the same time, watching it and hearing about it, it's like, oh, uh, you know how it is, right? <laughs> I'm totally the same way. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> we just got some instant feedback. Uh, this is from this is from well, Julia. Well, why don't we read that? Uh, um, I thought. Oh, read well, you the know, poem. Yeah, we're gonna have yeah, to read the poem, and we're definitely. gonna bring up. We're gonna read her instant feedback. Uh, you know, okay. one thing I think before we do that, I think that should be the last thing we do. Yes, on the show. That's... let's save it to the very end. All we right. want to thank people. Um, thank you for listening. Thank to our callers. We have a new sponsor too. We haven't even talked about that. Oh my gosh. Stingray Body Art. Uh, Scott Madeline is now sponsoring the show. We're, We're gonna so have happy. a lot of giveaways, thank tattoos. You, Scott. Um, it, it really helps us to make sure the show stays on the air at Unregular Radio. We do have the listeners, we have the support, but now we needed some financial backing and he's really helping us. Stingraybodyart.com. Yeah, this, thank you to Scott Madeline. Yeah. That's, a, that's big news for us, and we're really excited. If you know any other sponsors, we're trying to keep this, you know, keep this ball rolling, keep gaining momentum. I mean, today we were able to give away two free tickets thanks to Unregular Radio. Uh, that went out to uh, Kevin Brown, KV, who just came on and rap. So yep. props to him, and there, he's going to be going to the Lift Fest this weekend. And I mean, this is great. I mean, this is what we're able to provide. We're giving back to you guys. We appreciate. We listen. We take in everything that you guys say. I just saw somebody, uh, somebody posted, made their own uh graphic for us for the yeah. two hotheads on cannabis it's really cute really? i didn't see this before yeah it's like a it's Is like a prescription red? pill bottle that says uh the thc pharmacy two hotheads on cannabis saturdays at 3 30 on unregular radio and then there's a picture of a bunch of weed nuggets with our faces superimposed on it awesome. <laughs> there's so a lot there's of those like love now. from the there, fans yeah, there were some more too like last night and there's another one coming out like I've, they're sending them to me Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome to see people doing that. We for us. really, really like. I can't tell you enough how how exciting this is to be part of something that's really we feel is making a difference, and and you guys are 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 supporting us, and it's a beautiful thing. It's and, uh, a beautiful thing. It's it, not unnoticed. It really is. We got- I, I wanted to um tonight tonight me and uh, the wife as I call her Carmelita, <laughs> we're uh, going out to dinner up to dinner with. Uh, Michael Malter and his wife KOP as we call him the king of pot we're going up to their house to have dinner I'm very excited about this you don't even 
if, if you know Michael Malta, he's been in here. Everyone knows him. How excited would you be to be going up to Michael Malta's house right now, Nikki? I, I would be jumping up and down. I'm sad I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're just such nice people, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this dinner tonight. We've been trying to do this for a long time. That's so, awesome. uh, you know, one thing I wanted to... Uh, things are going so well. I just want to uh, thank everybody. Mike Newman, Newman the producer, number one. He's behind that board every single week. Every single Saturday, he pulls stuff for us every week. I want to really thank you know, the music that you pick out and dealing with us and our, you know, our. I'll all give our, myself some applause. Yeah, give, give me some applause. <laughs> he deserves it. He really does. Yeah. <laughs> all of our amazing guests. Remember, next week, you guys cannot miss it. This is a big deal. We're having Barney Frank on the show. Oh. Um, this is it's unbelievable. We are so thrilled and so grateful. Was that like the next level of applause? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. Um, and yeah, that's we're going to exactly need what it. it. Is we're going to need week. it. And we're definitely going to need you guys to call in. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be totally starstruck. We need callers. <laughs> we need questions. We need your, you to help us get through this. Definitely. Yeah. And, get uh, through this. I yeah. just can't wait. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> without having a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the station, Unregular Radio. This place is, I mean, it's amazing. amazing I would say it every week, but it's true. And they have big, they have big stuff coming up. I mean, they're always promoting local music, local shows. Expanding. We're You've gonna seen keep the hosting new- bands live on our show as well. Um, it, it's all part of the, the Unregular Radio Network. KC uh, really posted a nice uh, yeah. blog. We're like the. The big story this week with our, you know, just see money and uh, Bonnie Frank. On, yeah, we on got some regular lots, website. We got some yeah. love on the website. And um, it just it's, it's it's such a great thing going on here. I want to support the station so there's everyone in here. You know, it's just it's such a good place. Unregularradio.com. You should be listening twenty four seven. If you're only listening to this show, and I know a lot of you are. Because we have our own fans. You should be listening to the station more often. There's yeah, there, a are, lot there of are four different streams to listen to. Yeah. 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 So, thank you. And uh, I, I always want to thank uh, Carmelita. She's, she's the main number one person that really has made sure this show is here. And uh, the, the second one is this new person, Heather Mack. I really want to thank you. <laughs> Every single week, I, you're amazing. Shucks. We're just, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, no, right. <laughs> we, had an, we had an instant feedback, and it's from... Oh, yeah. This can you read it? Do you want to yes, read it? Yes, I'd love to. I, <laughs> this, this is from Juliet, Peter's page, and the message is, I love Mr. Can, and Heather can rap really well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Miss Sarah, Miss Nikki, and Mr. Mike. And did I leave anyone out? Well, there's always more people in our family, like Tommy and Mike Simpson and everyone at Unregular Radio, but... We'll cut you some slack. You got a lot of them in. You're listening. (laughs) You did. You really are. And it really makes a difference to us to have this. And that's Peter's page. That is Mm -hmm. Peter McWilliams' uh, tribute page. Um, It's the online museum for Peter McWilliams' work. If you look at that website, petermcwilliams.org, is a lot of good info. And I really like that website. And that's the person behind it. And we're going to read a quote from Peter McWilliams. Mm hmm. It's uh, from the book of poetry. No, actually, this isn't even a book of poetry. This was from like a, a diary of Peter McWilliams. Mm-hmm. It, it should be in a book. I don't know if it is, but we're, we're making it public. And Ju- Julia from Peter's Page has made it public on Facebook. And this is where it's from. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to end on this. Um, it, the title is Love 101. This is from Peter McWilliams' personal journal. Love 101. Final exam. Multiple choice. Number one. I would rather A, lie, or B, love. Number two, I would rather have A, my way all the time, or B, love. And I think we all know what the answer is, what the right choice is, and that's what we choose every week on this show is love. And we'll see you next week on on Regular Radio. And thank you, thank you, Peter McWilliams. Thank, Thank you, you for reading that so well, Heather. Oh, shucks. That was great. No problem. Thank okay. you for the beautiful words. We'll see you next week with Barney Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unregularradio.com.